new at 11. Racing Raid. I'm at Mike Harmon's shop with exclusive new details in the case. The evidence deputies say could lead to this missing car hauler. Railroad Inferno. Oh. Whoa! Caught on camera. What caused this train to go off the tracks and explode? Inside a tornado. The state-of-the-art storm chasing vehicle and how it captured this rare footage. I'm inside city council chambers as they debate the future of Charlotte's controversial streetcar. This WBTV high-definition program is sponsored by Honda dealers of the Carolinas. WBTV News at 11 starts right now. Tonight, Rowan County Sheriff's deputies say they found stolen property at NASCAR driver Mike Harmon's race shop. Good evening and welcome. I'm Molly Grantham. Paul Cameron has the night off. Our cameras captured deputies dismantling two race cars. They told us Harmon stole them from fellow racer Jennifer Jo Cobb. All new at 11 o'clock only, WBTV's David Spunt was there as deputies raided Harmon's race shop in Mooresville. So, David, what'd they find? Molly, well, they had a very busy day and part of the night. I'm told that they recovered five trucks and two cars. Deputies say they belong to Jennifer Jo Cobb from two separate garages belonging to Mike Harmon. Rowan County deputies are watching NASCAR driver Mike Harmon closely tonight after recovering five trucks and two cars from Harmon's garages this afternoon. Cars deputies say were stolen from racer Jennifer Jo Cobb at the end of last year. I have uh, total faith in the Rowan County Sheriff's Department and the lead detective that's on the case. That was Cobb speaking with us almost two weeks ago, just after Mike Harmon was arrested in a separate incident for stealing another one of her vehicles. Police say Harmon was behind the wheel as Cobb's holler was stolen in the middle of the night. We spoke exclusively with Harmon moments after he posted bail on the initial charge. I've never stolen much as a piece of bubble gum, and to be arrested for a felony is, is ridiculous. Harmon says he never took Cobb's holler and continues to insist there's more to the story. People that know me know that I didn't do this. It's ridiculous. I mean, um, you know, you know that everybody's shop is under surveillance. Our shop's under surveillance. Why, why would you put yourself in arm's way like that? Last week, a judge ordered Harmon to stay away from Cobb, though the two both say they plan to finish this year's racing season. I'm a big believer in God's will, so perhaps this happened for a, a bigger, better cause or reason. Harmon has not been charged with what happened today and part of tonight. I did speak with Jennifer Jo Cobb and Mike Harmon by phone tonight. The two say they're prohibited from speaking on camera, but both did reiterate they're cooperating with authorities and sticking to their stories on this. Molly. Okay, David, thank you. Breaking news now from Disneyland. Uh, officials ordered one area evacuated and bomb squads called in after a small explosion. It didn't hurt anyone, but you see everyone there on the ground. Investigators say it appears to be dry ice in a plastic bottle tossed in a trash can. Witnesses say it sounded like a gunshot, but much louder. So far, Disney's not commenting. We'll stay on this. New video now at 11 o'clock shows the moment a derailed train exploded in Baltimore, Maryland. Whoa! The CSX freight train crashed into a trash truck this afternoon. It was headlines making everywhere. The blast rattled homes at least a half mile away. A nearby building collapsed. It caught fire. Investigators say there are no toxic fumes in the air. Our tactics now are, are we, have, we are choosing to let it burn. We are there on the scene, ready to attack it. We're conferring with CSX to make sure we go about it in the most, uh, uh, the safest way for our people. Whoa! Another look at that explosion. The truck driver involved in the crash, which caused the derailment, is in the hospital in serious but stable condition. No one else was hurt. Just in at 11 o'clock, a skateboarder airlifted to the hospital after he was hit by a car. This happened outside the Applebee's on Highway 24 bypass in Albemarle in the past hour. Stanley County officials tell us the person who was hit is being taken to CMC Maine. We'll let you know when we get any new information. Controversy tonight over a proposal which would allow concealed weapons on college campuses. The state legislature is debating it, but the UNC system comes out and says it opposes it. Now a gun rights advocacy group is getting into the debate and releasing this ad. Watch. 35 sexual assaults in just three years. Probably more than that. UNC is under federal investigation for not reporting sexual assault. We found that ad on YouTube, but Grassroots North Carolina is playing the ad on several radio stations across the state. It encourages listeners to call state legislators and ask them to please approve the bill. The provision would allow students and staff to have weapons legally on campus. Now, they must have a legal concealed and carry permit. And the weapons could only be on campus if they were stored in cars. Now, all new at 11 o'clock, we asked UNC Charlotte students what they think. 
it is a necessary thing. I feel students should be able to carry firearms as long as they've taken a concealed uh, weapon class. I'd feel a lot more safer knowing that some of my fellow students and what, that have concealed carry weapons would be able to eventually stop something. The proposal passed the State House earlier this month. The State Senate is now considering it. No word if Governor McCrory would sign the bill if it passes. New at 11 o'clock, this Charlotte mother who tearfully told us about her child's death back in November now faces murder charges in the case. The six-month-old died at the Southern Comfort Inn on Tuckaseegee Road. Police originally charged the child's dad, Todd Broderick. Now they say the mom, Crichet Muzan, also played a part. Muzan is charged with murder, child abuse, and obstructing justice. This DS the worker is resigning after WBTV revealed he was arrested and charged with indecent exposure at a local school. Police say they arrested Derek Hensley for urinating outside of York Intermediate School and they say he was drunk. We first uncovered the arrest last week and we asked Gaston County DSS to explain why Hensley was still on the job. Tonight we've learned he resigned. After years of contentious debate and a failed vote last year, tonight Charlotte City Council is taking steps that could bring a streetcar like this one to Charlotte. I'll know at 11 o'clock, Brigitte Mack was in the chamber for a surprise twist in this funding vote. Okay, Brigitte, give it to us. What was it? Uh, a lot of surprise twist, Molly. In fact, it was kind of like watching a uh, political theater for a bit tonight, but it was really a critical move by one council member changing her position on the gold line that allowed it to finally move forward. All those in the affirmative, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The motion passes. You heard it right there after a couple of hours of discussion inside that meeting chamber. The decision to move forward with what is now known as the City Links Gold Line was passed by a vote of seven to four. Councilwoman Beth Pickering changing her position on it, instrumental in giving uh, those in support of the Gold Line the votes they needed to pass the measure. Of course, new city manager Ron Carley was pushing for City Council to make this move so the city could make its uh, could meet its deadline uh, to apply for that federal grant altogether. This phase two, Molly, going to cost $126 million. The city has to come up with half of that. The federal funding would be the other half. So finally, a long time coming and some forward movement tonight. We're live at the Government Center. I'm Brigitte Mack, WBTV on your side. Another big vote from council tonight as well, Brigitte. They voted 10 to 1 tonight to tear down the old Eastland Mall. The city is trying to redevelop that land, possibly as a movie studio. New at 11 o'clock, a woman rescued from this cruise ship off the Carolina coast. This is video from YouTube of the ship called the Norwegian Breakaway as it left New York City. A 59-year-old woman suffered a heart attack on board last night. The Coast Guard ordered the ship to alter course and head towards Elizabeth City so a rescue chopper could get that woman. The chopper took her to a hospital in Norfolk, Virginia. Her condition, we checked, it is not right now available. New at 11 o'clock, an American military official has been shot at a nightclub in Venezuela. The man was shot in the leg and taken to a hospital. This happened in the city of Caracas. It's not clear what condition he's in, and the U.S. Embassy has not yet issued a statement. For the first time, we can take you inside the brand new Harris Teeter in Plaza Midwood. The grocery store opens to the public tomorrow morning. We got a sneak peek today. Nearly a year after the original store at Central and the Plaza closed its doors, shoppers told us they just cannot wait for this new one to open tomorrow. Everybody's been talking about it. And what are they saying? They're saying Harris Teeter is opening. We can't wait. The doors open at 8 a.m. with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Eric Thomas right now is in the First Alert Weather Center tracking our forecast for what that weather will be like tomorrow morning. Eric? All right, Molly, yeah, that's kind of exciting, the big the big grand opening for Harris Teeter. Well, let's get you right to it. If you're going there or anywhere else or perhaps work, we all know about that. Another quiet start, mild and pleasant conditions at temperature about 66 degrees. Hey, I can't say that, though, about the middle part of the country. Tornadoes being reported from Michigan all the way back through the plains. When will that front get here? Well, we'll talk about it. It's all coming up. Stay tuned in your first alert forecast. Next at 11 o'clock. You've probably seen this video of a tornado captured by a daring team of storm chasers last night. What you haven't seen is the vehicle that kept them safe. We're going to show you how it works, and Eric will break this video down moment by moment to explain exactly what we're really seeing. Plus, a 92-year-old veteran targeted by criminals. Now kind-hearted strangers, other veterans, are coming to his rescue. You're watching WBTV, the choice for news at 11 o'clock, and we're back right after this.